The Meddlesome Meeples present The Quest Report with Matt and Richard. Hello and welcome to The Quest Report, where this week we are talking about a massive game. It is Twilight Imperium, the fourth edition, which we finally have been able to play. And Matt's going to tell us about it. Yep, and I'm going to preface this with mm-hmm. a little disclaimer. Yeah. We haven't been paid for this, that's not the disclaimer. But Twilight Imperium 3, for a number of years, has been my favourite game. Because mm-hmm. of its epic scope, uh, the way it handles combat and politics, uh, and exploration in a way that a lot of other games just don't. And I really enjoy all those different elements of the game. The trading really matters, whereas it doesn't in a lot of games... Uh, so much can be a bit added on, can't it? Yeah. Uh, whereas TI three to me was just a perfect blend of of those various elements, mm. and I love how deep the game was. Although it took a lot of time, you didn't feel like it took a lot of time because you just lost yourself in no. the excitement of the game. You just realise it's dark outside. Yeah. And you're hungry. <laughs> <laughs> and there's wolves howling at the moon. Sort of, yeah. yeah. Uh, but TI four, once I played it for the first time, automatically surpassed that. Mm. There was one thing that I didn't think it did as well as TI3 right. everything else I thought it did better so I'll start off with that one thing we're not just going to be comparing it all the way through this review just, just in case you're not familiar with that I just want to talk but about in, the one thing Yeah, <laughs> but in TI3 you had these little exploration tokens so that you could use as an optional oh, uh, yeah. rule so it wasn't you didn't have to do it but you could do it Mm. and you had these little tokens that you'd mix up shuffle up put face down on the different planets and then as you landed on a planet um you would reveal this token and maybe you got some resources that your troops found there uh you might find some locals that would resist your landing and you'd have to your troops might be wiped out by some gas cloud or you Mm. may have to fight to try and take control of that planet yeah all sorts of things unknown things on the planet it could just be a safe planet with nothing you just turn it over and it's a blank token i I Um, did enjoy that when we did the third edition yeah Yeah. even though it killed all my guys sometimes that were landing on the planet but it it, it, it added to that feeling of exploration didn't it yeah exploring the unknown as you uh, drop troops on the planet. So you're not just fighting the other guys that are sitting around the table with you. There's also something yeah. in the game that's a threat. Yeah, and actually, Star Trek Ascendancy does that quite well with the exploration tokens and the yeah. possible civilizations you're going to encounter. Send all the ensigns down to die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if they're going to put on a red shirt, they've got it coming. Especially when it's a long series. So yes. Yeah. There we go. It's their own fault. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that is the only thing I thought Ti3 had going for it over Ti4. Everything else, TI4 is superior. And if you really wanted to, you could just keep those tokens and put them on planets anyway to add them in to TI4. Yeah, just don't tell them to be that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> don't you tell the game do designers. This. <laughs> you could do this. Yeah. Maybe it's a possible ex- future expansion. Who knows? It could be. FFG yeah. are not really known for wanting to make money out of expansions, are they? No. 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 I mean, that's just sad. <laughs> Some people just want to make money. <laughs> but... Everything else, it seems to be improved on, and it feels like the game's been streamlined in a lot of ways. Uh, for example, uh, just even the way they do the, the player cards, okay? You've now got two sheets that uh, you use. Uh, one one will talk you through the different phases of the game and allows you to control your tactic fleet and strategy oh, yeah. tokens. You kind of put them together, don't you? to keep your trade goods. Whereas before on TI3, it was all in one bundled space, okay? Right, yeah. Um, also, what this does differently on the back it gives you your starting units on the back of your player sheet mm. that used to be on the front of the sheet in ti4 uh, ti3 sorry but obviously you only need that right at the beginning of the game so you it's now on the back with all the <laughs> law turning it over and so, scattering yeah. all the pieces <laughs> so now you, when, every, as soon as you start you just turn it over everything's in one place there's nothing on this sheet that you don't need mm. it's just made a little bit smarter one thing i like about it as well is now you've got your pictures on the front of your player sheet to help you easily identify which of your various ships are what type. Because there is a lot of them. There is a lot. And if it's particularly if you're not familiar with the game, you might be thinking, oh, what's a cruiser? Which one's a destroyer? Which one's a dreadnought? Which one's a carrier? <laughs> you know, whereas... It's not good for a general to be thinking that. <laughs> <laughs> Admiral. Admiral would be thinking that. Admiral. Um, there you are. But... I demoted myself after <laughs> the game. <laughs> Hang your head in shame. With it. Um, but all of that is there. It's easier to keep track of. And what's quite smart about it as well is that with the technology cards, because you used to get upgrades for your ships and you'd have them next to your 
um, next to your player sheet. You keep having to now, look at them. Now, when you get the upgrade for your ships, you just cover up the one on your on your main player sheet. Yeah, so you kind of modify it as yeah. you get more advanced. And it just good. helps keep everything more organised and easier to get your head around, yeah. as I say, if you're not too familiar. Because it is a big game in scope, so there's a lot to take in. Yeah, so we all have this placemat in front of us. <laughs> <Put> yeah. <things> <laughs> on. <laughs> and it just it made everything a lot simpler. The other thing that I really like about this is the tech tree. Now, the tech tree for the previous Twilight Imperiums could be a little bit convoluted at times because you'd have to get very specific tech cards to then be able to unlock other tech cards in the tech tree. And yes, I people think... used to have apps on their iPads and stuff like that to to try and help keep track of wh where they are because otherwise you're constantly flicking through your tech deck going, okay, well, what can I build? I've got this and I've got that. Yeah, I think I just what asked that you allow or something. Me to... I mean, just <laughs> yeah. Consult with the enemy about yeah. what I can build. <laughs> I wish I'd always give you an honest reply. Uh, but this time, instead of having to have uh, you know very specific uh, technology, whether it's anti-mass deflectors or something like that, um, you, you now every tech is coloured. Yeah. So you've got your red red tech, yellow tech, green tech, and blue tech. Yeah, very and as you look at a tech things. card, you it will have like on the bottom right hand corner um, maybe a green insignia or a yellow insignia and that means that that's one towards the cost of buying another tech with that colour. Yeah so rather than needing specific technologies to lead to another one you just might need two reds and a yellow Yeah. and if you have them then you can build that next technology. Yeah. And it just makes it more streamlined, a lot easier to get your head around, a lot easier as you're going through because you want to build a new technology but you're not necessarily sure which one to build. It yeah. allows you to much more easily go, oh, I can build this, I can build that, I can build that. And it's it speeds up gameplay time because of that. It makes it easier to get your head around. There were quite a few things that sped up gameplay, I thought, even mm. though it still took all day. But um, but that was with five players. Yes. And it's still, I think our play time was probably four and a half, five hours, and that included breaks for food. Yeah. Yeah, and breaks for reading rules and working out what we were doing and stuff yeah. which happens sometimes yeah you always encounter some kind of weird situation but anyway everybody knows if you know anything about twilight imperium that it is an absolutely massive game mm. you do have to set aside a whole day to yeah. play it basically. it's not a games At night least. it's an event isn't it yeah you have it it's as an as event it was a day and we have been planning it for a long time yeah. to be able to to do that so it's a great way to spend christmas day isn't it is that it was that the day i think it ran it was around there. that yeah which is like the fact that we can still remember all this what ha that happened. <laughs> that was the last shows... time. We, that was the last time we've had a chance to play it. Yeah, it was... but we can still remember so mm. much about it because it it was so great, and we've got all these uh, things. So I don't I'm not sure if we have to describe just just something about the rules anyway. It's all about space empires anyway. Yeah. I mean, we build the galaxy out of tiles. That mm. happens at the start of the game, so it's a different galaxy each time. We each have our home planet. And then we explore from there. Yeah. And um, each planet will have resources and it will also have some influence as well, which is the political yeah. kind of power, like how much clout you have to be able to vote on different things. And basically, it is a very, very detailed game about running your own space empire. Yeah. And there are victory points, aren't there? But there they, are. They, you get them in so many different ways, though. There are so many different ways to win. You were the Emirates of Haken. Yep. How you say it? Which are, we all I call say them. Hakan, but... Hakan. Okay, Hakan. They, they're the lion ones. Now the lion is always what you see on the front of the Aslan. box. <laughs> yeah, Aslan. <laughs> but the way they actually play, they were a bit more like Ferengis, weren't they? So they're yeah. like the uh, the lion they're the Ferengis. Trading. Yeah, they're the trading part of the empire. So... so Matt had loads of trading abilities and stuff, and it was really good. Like do some trading with the. Emirates it felt like the time. trading really actually mattered. As some, as I say, some games I've played with trading in it doesn't feel like it particularly matters that much it's just okay you're gonna have this and i'm gonna have this off mm. you with this it really did feel like I, I was able to use that and influence um influence people around me because i had so many things i could trade with yes um so like i was able to trade not with anybody at the table not just my neighbors uh, but it meant that i could sort of influence people maybe not to attack me because yeah. they'd want to trade with me on the next round which is how bit. global trade helps mm. to revert wars so yeah. <laughs> we've seen it in action in this game so yeah you were the uh, the emirates of Hakan and i was the universities of jonah which a lot of the time in especially in the other games uh, the editions of this this is kind of who you want to be 
And I was glad that I got this. We did mm. it randomly, didn't we? We yeah. kind of like dealt them out, and I was really happy to get these. I was actually hoping to be the the universities of Jalma because they start off so close to building a war sun, which, if you're not familiar with this game, is kind of the equivalent of a Death Star. Yeah, and in this edition, they look amazing. Yeah, They're like in two little pieces that you stick together to make the mini. That is one <laughs> of the things I wanted to mention. Obviously, for some people, aesthetics aren't going to be particularly Im- important as it as theme and gameplay, no. but the actual components for this. Uh, the ships and everything look a lot more sleek than the older editions. Well, less they just zip around the galaxy. Yeah. They, 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 just, they just look better. I mean, if you compare them side by side, they've not really hugely changed the model, but everything just looks a little bit sleeker, a little bit more clean cut in the way... Obviously, moulding techniques and things have come on a lot in 20 mm. years from when the game first started. Uh, and even since the third edition came out, it's improved a lot. And it does reflect in the quality of the components here um but you are still going to be able to recognize if you're familiar with ti3 you're going to be able to go oh yeah that one's the that one's the dreadnought that's going to be the war sun that's the destroyer etc yeah it just looks better better made yeah and like you said before you've got the little pictures here and so you can easily see kind of Mm. what stats it has and how far it can move and things like that so the way that yeah. uh, they those stats work is, for example, in combat, it'll give you a, a number for hit for hits, and everything above that number scores a hit. So, for example, you you know your dreadnought hits on a five or above, and you're using ten sided dice. So, effectively, with a dreadnought, you've always got a fifty fifty chance. In fact, uh, slightly more than fifty yeah. chance. You've got a sixty percent chance of hitting on a d ten. Um, some of them not so good like your dre- destroyer which only hits on a 9 but it gets to um, make the anti-fighter barrage before combat begins which is very good because without getting too technical fighters effectively soak up enemy damage mm. so it's a good way of meaning that your hits really count for more yeah so you take out the fighters with the anti-fighter barrage and then your actual when you're rolling the die then uh, those hits are going to go on the big ships after yeah. that. So, yeah, that's a, a good tactic for combat. There wasn't that much combat when we played it. There was towards the end. Um, yeah, there were we... several <laughs> massive fleet battles. Yeah, um, between you and Heather. <laughs> and Carolyn. And Carolyn. And Carolyn. Yeah. There was, um, well, my na- I had Sam on one side, didn't I? We didn't really uh, scrap too much. We were, we were quite you friendly neighbours. We were yeah. trading a lot. Um, you were fighting with Sam on the other side and with me a little bit. I went to Sam's system to test my war son. That, that's what happened. And he was your new Alderaan. He was um, Alderaan, <laughs> yeah. Which uh, I felt quite bad about. Towards the end, though, there were some real epic space battles. Because I was being a- attacked, because as, as it got close to me winning, uh, Heather and Carolyn both attacked me quite a bit. And there was quite a lot of strikes from my fleet onto onto them, and they were attacking me as yeah. well. And it was... Well, they were next. They were near you. Mm. I really, I wanted to attack you because you were so close to winning, but... <laughs> There wasn't that much I'd do. I do. You did attack me not long before that, though. You, well, I'd, yeah. What happened I'd was... I managed to take Met- Mechatol Rex. Yes. And so you just had some guys on Mechatol Rex. And what I actually did towards the end was I did some quick R&D to <laughs> upgrade the... Oh, I think it was my carrier. To upgrade mm. the engines on my carrier to make it be able to get to Mechatol Rex before the end of the game and drop some guys down to try and fight your guys there. Mm. Just to take away some kind of advantage you may have had. But, uh, I mean, it got there, and then the guys all just got shot and died. Yeah. I mean, it was worth a try. It was worth a try. But that that was my contribution to the war effort. The yeah. rest of the time I was just kind of cheering Heather and Carolyn on. <laughs> <laughs> now, one of the things that has, is different about this game as well from previous editions, mm-hmm. and we've got to mention this, is the strategy cards. Now, the way the game works, at the start of every round, you're going to be drawing strategy cards, and they are very, very important. For one thing, they did dictate the turn order for that round, with numbers oh, yes. from the lowest going uh, to high. And secondly, they give you abilities. Now, each one of these has a primary ability, which you can use, and they're always very good, mm. as well as a secondary ability, which other people can do if they spend tokens. Yeah. So, for example, uh, let's take one. Uh, the technology card. Now this is number seven, so this is one of the lower ranks, which means you're, you're going to be coming uh, having yeah. to go later in the game. But it allows you to research a technology for free, and then you can spend six resources to research one more technology. So potentially, 
two technologies there, one of them free. A secondary ability allows other players to spend one token from their strategy pool and four research resources to research a technology. Yeah. So there's a, a good benefit for you, which is typically free, with an optional secondary one there to spend, mm. and then something else that other people can do for for spending. Yeah. And these you can't pass until you've used your um, strategy card. Yeah, because you've picked your strategy at the start. You have to actually do the strategy that you've picked at some point. And you love... can take actions without using a strategy card, but yeah, you yeah, have to I know, use them know what you mean, turn. But cool. it's, uh, this is what I love about this game, is that mm. everybody... You can kind of decide, well, my, ship's, my, my thing is doing okay for technology at the moment. I think I need to do some trade. So then at the start of that, you will pick the trade strategy mm. like for this turn my strategy is trade yeah. and obviously you do other things but that is your your kind of special ability yeah. you have for that time so the ones that there are are leadership diplomacy politics construction trade warfare technology and imperial which is a bit of a weird one and that, and is that has been uh, that has been changed from the first one because in the in TI3 typically you just took that and you got a point which meant broken. Yeah, it would break the game because yeah. you know people would just be keep grab, grabbing that, and then maybe on the next turn they'd get the leadership uh, one, so they could pick first next just time and yeah. then go for the uh, the imperial one again. Mm. Now that did break the game in one of the expansions for TI three. They they brought out a new set of these cards, and this reflects the second. You know that that expansion yeah yeah this is uh, the one version. that works this is yeah. the one that works and it, with this one you gain a point if you control mechatol rex yeah so they're not is just for taking that so you can still mm. score points off that um and it is a good one to have but you, as soon as you go to mechatol rex usually everyone goes for you mm. so which we did which we did <laughs> and it was fun i enjoyed yeah, it it was fun um but all of these cards there isn't a bad one and this is one of the things I like about the game. There isn't a bad choice here. No. Because everything you do is going to be good. So, for example, Warfare, which gives is six. So, again, it's a lower... You, you're not going to be going first. Remove one of your command tokens from the game board, then gain a command token, and redistribute any number of the command tokens on your command sheet. Now, what this means is that you can do something that no one else can do. Because once you activate a system to do something in it, you put a command token on it. You can't do anything else in that system again. You can't take ships out of that system, but this allows you to do that, which means you can make a lot more movement, for example, because you can bring ships into a place, take your command token off, and move them out again, so you can travel further. Mm. It allows you to do a lot more production in an area. It allows you to um, have more battles in an area, and it is brilliantly named as the Warfare one, because it just allows you to do a lot more. Yeah, that's but, the thing. It's not obvious why that has something to do with war, yeah. taking the command token away, but it does mean you can attack twice yeah. and move your ships further where other people can't. Yeah. So, yeah. And then you've got politics, which is number three. You know, Choose a player other than the speaker. That player gains a speaker token, which means uh, you can then draw two action cards as well, and you can uh, alternate some of the agenda decks. So this is a very useful one. It means that you're going to have more clout when it comes to uh, using the politics cards. The diplomacy one means that you can choose a system except Mechatol Rex and, me and stop anyone from attacking you in that system. And there's just every single one of these gives you something really good. Mm. So even if you are maybe the last one to choose, you're not going to think, oh, well, I'm just going to have to take this one. It's a dud, but it's all that's left. There's always going to be something good that you can do and it allows you to play to the strengths of your faction because you can pick one that pairs well with your faction i kept picking the technology one because i was at universities and i was yeah. doing research and then because i was picking that other people got to do some as well they just had yeah. to spend some resources because that's the other thing if somebody does take the one that you wanted uh, when they use it you can spend a few resources and use a secondary ability it's normally almost as good yeah, but it's just like a less powerful version it. of the main one, isn't it? Yeah, so it's not like you'd be completely stuck. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the strategy part is one of my favourite bits, and it's it's always fun, like looking at what everybody else picks, and and you think I kind of know what they're going to do now. <laughs> Combat's really straightforward. Um, dice rolling. Dice rolling, and there are cards that you can use that will affect. You can play to affect combat as well, mm -hmm. um, but all of that is very simple and very straightforward. I say it is still a big time hunk. You will need a day to play this if you're going to have 
more than three players. But what else were you going to do that day? Well, I mean, <laughs> would you rather play TI4 or do something else? I mean, it's going to be TI4. Um, this, this is dangerous. <laughs> yeah, this is a brilliant successor, in my opinion, to TI3. It does everything that I would like a new edition to do, and it improves on the original in every single way. Uh, I'm going to keep my little tokens for exploration, though. <laughs> um, but other than that, yeah, it improves on everything. It looks better, plays better, streamlined, easier to understand. I have to give this one a huge recommendation. It is my new favourite game, TI3. It was nice while it lasted, but you've been replaced by a newer, younger model. And, uh, you know, accept your fate. <laughs> that's a nice way of putting it. <laughs> accept your fate. But it's still here. It's up it there. is. It is. Um, that's because I haven't decided whether to sell it or to keep it for component parts. Um, mm. Well, keep it so for your TI, exploration. TI3, you may end up being scrapped for spares, but... <laughs> It gets worse. <laughs> yeah, well, it's not looking good for Heather. <laughs> <laughs> I, I loved this game as well. And, um, well, I, I always did love the whole universe of it as well because um, I was reading the law compendium mm. for the, the few weeks before we played it. So I, I borrowed this because I wanted to kind of get really into all the, like, all the story of it mm. and everything to really because understand is... what they were actually doing. I mean, it does add to... Uh, a game if you've got a good bit of fluff and lore to yeah. go with it and story and you understand better why things are happening yeah why the races are built the way they are and um ti4 when it came out it had the lore compendium to come with it you also on the day it was released mm -hmm. you could get like a deluxe hardback that had all the gameplay the faq and the the lore Oh, inside yeah, it as, well, as well, you? which yeah. uh, is nice, and it's handy to have that because it meant that like, you could take the way the, the rule books and mm. read it, and I could read it beforehand. So we both had a chance to read the rules before we played. I think that's why I was able to read it beforehand. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I like it when you've got got that option. I mm. think every game should come with two rule books. Yeah, oh, and every game over a certain scale should come with two rule books. You mm. know, Splendor and Ticket to Ride, they barely need a one rule book. So no, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it did benefit from having that second rule book. But it, as I say, hugely, uh, huge improvement on the on TI3. I, if you like science fiction, if you like area control, if you like strategy games at all, then to me this is an essential game, but don't expect to play it that often. That's it. If uh, if you didn't have it here, I would probably not know about it. But I would also, um, I would like to have my own copy of this, but... Like it's unlikely that I'd have enough time or space to play it. <laughs> like I realise how big a table you need mm. for this and how much of a day and it's like I just want to keep coming around here and, and playing your copy of it. <laughs> and, uh, so it is a great game and uh, I probably it is probably one of my favourites. It's just the fact that it's so difficult to find enough time to play it mm. but um, it's well worth it once you do. So there we are. We're giving TI4 a massive Meddlesome Meeples recommendation. It's the most meddlesome game I've ever played. It I've is. got to say that. It is. So there we are. Stay meddlesome. Farewell, Quester. To find out about other productions by the Meddlesome Meeples, then check out our channel or rendezvous with us at meddlesomemeeples.com. Until next time, Quester, farewell and keep thine axe sharp.